Hello. In this video, we will learn about cloud computing. Cloud computing is nothing but availability of processing power, storage, and applications delivered on demand to the customers over the internet. For example, when we say processing power, that is the high-end servers which are made available for hosting your sites, running your enterprise applications, and more. Or when we say storage, it is a place to keep your data, music, photographs, and other media online, like on MySQL database or on Google Drive. When we talk of applications, they are all the applications you use over the internet. This could be system software, like virus checking, or providing some services, like Netflix or Roblox, or collaboration apps, like Microsoft Teams, Gmail, etc. And companies like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, and many others provide you such cloud platforms. So, why do we need cloud computing? Before the internet became popular, most companies had in-premise installation. This means, if they needed computers, they had to buy one. On top of investing in hardware, they also had to invest in software, electricity for power and cooling, security, data backup, disaster recovery, and maintenance too. So, in other words, costs just kept going up. On top of it, most of the time the computing power remained unused and was utilized only 30 to 40 percent. So, the benefit of cloud computing is lower cost of ownership. That is, rather than owning their own computer infrastructure or data centers, companies can rent anything from storage to application from a cloud service provider. In this way, they don't have to worry about upgrades and maintenance. They get off-site storage, which increases collaboration amongst employees. They avoid the upfront cost and they pay only for what they use. If you look back at history, in 1960s, when computers were very expensive, IBM and DEC used to provide their computers for time sharing. You could submit jobs to be run on IBM mainframes. In 1972, IBM developed the first virtual machine. The cloud symbol was used way back in 1977. Once the internet and the World Wide Web came into the picture, many telecommunication companies offered VPN or virtual private networks, and Compaq started offering online disk space where you could keep files. The word cloud itself was coined by Ramesh Chalapa in 1997. The word cloud was used as a metaphor for the internet, and the cloud symbol was used to represent the network of computing equipment. In 1999, Cloud companies such as Salesforce and VMware were incorporated. In 2002, Amazon launched Amazon Web Services. In 2006, Hadoop was released. In 2008, Google launched Google App Engine. In 2010, Microsoft released Microsoft Azure. And in the next few years, almost everyone jumped onto the cloud computing bandwagon. So, based upon deployment model, cloud services can be leveraged in three different ways. Public private, and hybrid. To understand the difference amongst them, let's take an example. Suppose you need to travel. A bus, private car, and rental car can be used to explain public, private, and hybrid cloud computing. Bus is a public transport, which is widely available, but you need to share it with others. It is cheaper, and you only pay for the distance you travel. On the other side, you can opt to buy your own car. You can pay upfront the money to buy the car, and also pay for the regular maintenance of it. The plus side is the privacy and the flexibility you get along with it, which is not possible with public transport. The middle path is taxi service. For a higher fee, you do get your privacy while using the car, but you do not own the car. This is the hybrid model. Similarly, in cloud computing, the public cloud is where cloud resources, such as servers and storage, are owned and operated by a cloud service provider and delivered over the internet. You pay only for what you use, and as long as you use it. As it is owned by a third party, you share the storage, hardware, and network devices with other companies that are subscribed to the same cloud service provider. For you, it is less complex and set up easily. The opposite of it is a private cloud. Enterprises can build private clouds within their own data centers by running applications on virtual servers that may reside on any number of available physical machines. It is dedicated to you, so it offers higher security over a public cloud. It is compliant with all data regulations, and control is completely in your hands. 
With hybrid clouds, organizations mix and match public and private cloud resources based upon their own requirements. For example, deploying high-end storage systems on-premises and using the cloud to store backup. You can determine the security risks you wish to take and what level of flexibility you want. Each of these models has their cons too. Public clouds have lesser security and flexibility is also limited. Private clouds require high initial investment and maintenance cost throughout. Hybrid has turned out to be expensive in the long run and complexity is much higher. From services perspective, there are three types of clouds. IaaS, which is Infrastructure as a Service, PaaS, which is Platform as a Service, and SaaS, which is Software as a Service. A washing machine can be used to explain them. Suppose you want to wash or laundry your clothes. The first option is IaaS, or Infrastructure at Home option, where you have a washing machine at home, and everything else, from washing to drying, is managed by you. You need to buy washing powder and anything else you need. Next is PaaS or Platform as a Service. Here you go to a laundromat or a common washing area to do your washing. Here the place may also provide you with detergent or softener for some extra fee. Next is Software as a Service or SaaS. Here you call for laundry service and the laundry man comes and picks up and returns the clothes to you at your doorstep. Similarly, the primary thing that differentiates the three main categories of cloud computing from one another is who manages the different pieces of the IT stack. In the traditional method, on-premise means that a company has invested in setting up its own IT environment. That means it has set up its hardware and software locally and does maintenance on its own. In Infrastructure as a Service, the cloud provider provides the infrastructure and serves the complete data center framework on pay as you go model. It hence eliminates the need for resource intensive on site installations. You will still have to take care of the complete software setup part of it, starting from OS to middleware, databases, and applications that are needed for your business. In Platform as a Service, the cloud service provider provides a web based environment where developers can deploy cloud apps. It maintains the operating system, the database, and the programming language that organizations can use to develop cloud-based software without having to maintain the underlying elements. Next is Software as a Service. It is a cloud-based software available for purchase on a small subscription basis. The cloud service provider provides a variety of services, such as applications for mail, collaboration, data storage, backup, and a lot more. To sum it up, each cloud model offers its specific features, and you need to choose the right one that suits your business needs. If you liked this video, please do like and subscribe, and keep watching more. Goodbye.